0127 meanest man I know Phoenix Arizona USA one time Billy Paul my son was to speak at a address a congregation in Minneapolis Minnesota and uh, he's not a minister like his uh, daddy but he said the first thing I'm scared so that's something on the order I suppose the way I f feel this morning standing here before these men of the Lord his servants and getting up here after such men as brother Otto Roberts Velma Gardner and other great servants of the Lord has been preaching here been here preaching and then I was just noticing the time and hearing the announcements it makes me about six hours to preach so I couldn't have time this morning for that I usually start in about 7 30 at night and let out about one or two in the morning so I just can't hardly haven't got time maybe I will try that tomorrow afternoon so it's a privilege of being here this morning I deem this a great honor that the brethren has presented to me through the Lord that I would be able to come here and address his wonderful breakfast this morning looking out seeing that you no doubt had a real breakfast I trust uh, that both spiritually and materially and now we have had such a glorious time in the last nine days here through the Maricopa Valley of Phoenix and Tempe and Mesa and Sunny Slope with this group of ministers and the churches we did this such a privilege to go for run this great convention addressing them and telling them that we're expecting the exceedingly abundantly above all that we could do or think to happen in this meeting brother Williams has just told me that one of his relatives was saved last night which would have been uh, very much in sin and we are if that man is here this morning I thank the Lord for you my brother and with all them who got saved and pray that if there's any here that's not saved that they will fall right in line this morning and be saved speaking of visions I have that's more or less been my ministry that the Lord gave me because not being sufficiently equipped with an education and so forth I maybe could not class myself as a clergyman but in this way I can be able to speak to the people and not just say what I know and then he confirms the rest of it so then if that much is all right and he says it's all right then the rest of it is all right too what they know how to speak that I maybe not know I love the Lord because he's so merciful when we are so undeserving and yet he's so merciful that's been one of the marvels of my life and my experience has been to see when we were so unworthy and yet he visit us anyhow and it just rides right over the top of our unworthiness and gives us his blessings anyhow as all know that many of you know perhaps that and just learning of another brother going through a deep time of sorrow like I have by losing my mother I don't think I lost her I think she just went ahead I think um, and I just hear that brother Robert McPherson daughter died is that right brethren does anybody my that grieved my heart when some sister told me I didn't even know it usually God in his mercy shows me my people before they go my father he died on my arm and I committed him his soul to God my brothers brother Shakirin and I and many of the men here was in overseas last year I believe it was at then Jamaica Kingston when one morning at a breakfast the Holy Spirit came in and I said now his presence is here to know see that lady going there with that on her arm call over here just a moment told our condition I see the young man coming here now he has a certain thing and what's bothering him and just then I looked down and I saw a person dying and a young man standing having a convulsion of um, spitting blood and I said call Billy Paul at once the young man was spitting blood, and don't let him go up on Blue Mountain today I don't know what it is and then later we found out it was my mother-in-law dying at the same time and my brother-in-law standing they are convulsing out of blood few weeks in the early part of August I had come in and brother Arganbright called me to go to Alaska with him on a hunting trip and to establish a chapter well I the Lord had showed me a vision of now 
this is awful to have to mention this i hope we don't sound sacrilegious but over hunting trip i was going to take and i was going to get what i was going to get who was going to be with me and why they dressed just exactly they'd uh, be a nine foot silver tip grizzly it would be a 40 inch 42 inch high rack of a caribou and when he called me i said that sounds like it but let me pray to father first and i announced it to the church and many places hundreds of people knew about it so going into alaska it sounds very good but the holy spirit kept warning me away and you must never go against the leading of the holy spirit then a few days later a man that was in british columbia who was just a young convert and had a brother that when i was up there in the spring that had uh, had epilepsy all of his life and we were back on a hunt then after the service he had asked god that i could see a vision for his brother he had never been in one of the meeting but riding out we was wrangling the horses brother eddie biscoll which i think is here this morning and i were in his back wrangling up the horses and i happened to look up across the mountain and i saw um, his brother and what he looked like and what to do for his cure and spurred up my horse real quick rode up and put my hand on the back of the guide saddle i said your brother described him said that's right i said go get him send him to come up here and then you leave him alone until he has one of the spells he says he has four or five a day and had all of his life as soon as he does jerky shot from his back and throw it into the fire and say this i do in the name of jesus christ it leave him and he got his brother and we just went out of the, the house we had to start that day to cut places so the hunters could get in what we call clearing trail and his little wife was so afraid of um she was a little pentecostal woman and way up on the racing river where about four five or six hundred miles from civilization and the little wife, when the boy fell into the feet, the first one she usually clears the window, but she was scared. But she jumped right, straddled of him, jacked his shirt off, and threw it in the cell murder, and say, this I do in the name of Jesus Christ. He's never had us one since, see? And so he wrote me a letter and said, come, well, up there to serve time, save time, rather. There's many sitting here who knows it was told beforehand just exactly i got the declaration in my pocket nine foot silver tip grizzly just exactly the place just exactly the time caribou and the guide said you mean from right here we can see to where that man is standing with a checkered shirt on that uh, you told us from here to there you're going to kill a nine foot silver tip grizzly i said that say the lord he said how will it happen i said that's not for me that's um he has done said it i just will be what he said and so on the road down we was in the uh we were about three miles right down the mountain not even one tree or anything just caribou moss above timberline when we was in a half a mile he was packing the head then we'd take turns about weighed about 150 pound so we were he said you say these are going to measure exactly 42 inches just exactly and when we got to the saddle just exactly 42 inches and uh, half a mile he said well brother Branham said now the bear is within a uh, half a mile i said that's right just turned i said what's that standing right there there he was looking right up at us nine foot silver tip grizzly and here is a uh, guy's declaration i have in my pocket coming home mother was sick it was a grace of god i had three other trips planned with brethren but he knew i wouldn't be able to take them now mother said to me billy i'm going home i said no mother i said if you're going home god has never said nothing to me and then on she went worse and worse and finally the lord called her soul home and i just to show you what the real pentecostal blessing means when she was so low, I led mother to Christ, baptized her myself, and when she was so low that she could no more speak, she just kept talking about the sweetness of the Lord 
and she seen me in a vision standing a real old man and holding to the cross reaching down for her and then when she was going a few moments because she left she went she couldn't speak no more i said mother you can't speak no more but as your son i want to ask you is jesus just a switch to you now as he has when you received him in the form of the holy spirit if you are dying right now mother you can't live over five more minutes and if jesus is just a switch to you though you can't speak but your eyes real fast and she'd bat her eyes and the tears roll down her cheeks like a little wind came through the building and her precious soul was taken home going home i asked the lord why why did he not show me was it because my other people i had been at different places and then i picked up the bible like this and i said father mrs dear miko she is old perhaps at this meeting she attends them all and she had just give me a red letter bible i don't believe in taking god's word and making a a yoga board out of it but i was so broken up just picking up her clothes down there and um, she was a real sweet person i pulled the bible down i said somewhere in here you can comfort me and the first she is not dead but sleepeth so the next morning about nine o'clock while sitting in the room weeping we was fixing to go down see how she had laid out a vision broke before me i seen great masses of little crippled children being laying together and i was singing a song bring them in and on the side the place was so far back till it went down like this and had to rise up in the back so the people in the back could see the front and thousands of people were gathered and i seen a renowned woman walk in though she was dressed old-fashioned with her skirt down and the little things around the neck and the big hat turned over and lots of hair done up in the back and i seen her walking up through the building and through the place this wasn't a building it was outside and there was a box on each side like where the celebrity sat and she was in this box in a few moments bowing to the people and i got in the pulpit and was going to preach and the lady turned to bow her head to me like this when she had her head bowed i bowed mine i was in five feet of her and when she raised up it was mother beautiful young just then like over here a thunder and a lightning and a roar and a voice said do not worry about her no more she's like she was in 1906 i went away and looked in the old family bible to find out what happened in 1906 and that was the year that she was a bride to my father so today she's part of the bride of the lord jesus of which i am a member someday i will see her again and i'm sure that sister and brother mcpherson in their loss and i want to say that brother tommy hicks just called me a few days ago when i first got in to phoenix here he lost his brother i guess it's been announced one of our brethren he was killed instantly down in mexico and brother tommy had to fly in to identify his brother which was an unsaved person and poor little tommy was crying his heart would break and i trust that we'll never have that experience but we all might be ready at the day to meet christ because if we if we are not ready it's not hard to go when you are ready but oh when you are not ready and remember those that was not just you don't dream those things you see them and they are factually fact the old will be young there forever there'll never be no more old age or any trace of sin or any trace of old age what an encouragement it is to us to know that there is a land beyond the river i would like now that we would approach him by bowed heads and bowed hearts as i just for a little drama as usually i like to give at businessmen breakfast i want to read some scripture and before reading it and praying i would ask if there's anyone here that has a request would like to be remembered just raise up your hand to god whatever the request is oh it's a needy audience a needy world let us pray heavenly father as we walk in and out among the people we are aware of the fact that someday we're going to make our last walk 
we must meet each other for the last time on earth someday, and as each time we ministers go to the pulpit, we wonder if there will be another opportunity to introduce you to our congregation, not knowing what time that may come. And Lord, we pray this morning to be merciful. And as I read the blessed word, I pray that the seed will fall into the hearts of the people, that they will receive it. And if there be any here today, Lord, that's not saved, may they get saved today. May they make all that all-sufficient decision this morning by accepting the Son of God as their Savior. Those who are weary in the way and has gone out of the way, bring them back, Lord. And those who are in the way, bring them joy and peace and satisfaction of their great acceptation in times of past. Of the Lord Jesus, we know that the people has been sitting here since seven o'clock this morning, tired. But will you refresh them, Lord, with showers of blessings from the heavenly throne of our Father? Give to them, O God, that which is needed for the hour. And now, with the reading of Thy Word, committing thyself to Thee, O Lord, and may the Holy Spirit bring forth the exceeding abundance from the Word. We, you know the request behind every hand that was raised, and I pray thee, Father, that thou will bless that request, give to them the desire of their heart, bless this gathering, this time of fellowship, when men and women of all walks of life from across the nation and out of the nation has gathered here at this great place called Phoenix, raised up from nothing. May the Holy Spirit take his little church this morning and make a Phoenix out of it, raise it, today by miracles and signs and wonders and the living God during this convention. May each one that's baptized out there in that swimming pool or wherever it may be this afternoon, may the Holy Spirit move upon the waters and catch that person as they come out. For we know the commission is given us by the word of God that can't fill Peter's great address on the day of Pentecost at the inauguration of the church, he said, Repent, every one of you, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you, your children, and to them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Lord, you are still calling today, and we know the Holy Spirit will come down into this valley and over this water this afternoon and give those people the desires of their heart, seeing the, sealing them into the kingdom of God, granted, Father, Bless this convention, bless every man, boy or girl, whoever may have a word to say. May it be fruitful to the rest of us. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Now, um, for just a few moments of our time, and I'm going to ask Brother Shakarian or some other that I'm a southerner, slow to begin with. So, I was, my people tell me that I come to the world kind of late. I've always been lit when I was preaching at the United Brethren Church not long ago, and I was just only about a hour late. You know, they are right on the dot. So the pastor got up and said, audience, I'll now introduce you to the late Mr. Branham. I was late for my wedding. I kept my wife waiting about two hours. I had to make a sick call now. If I can't be late for my funeral, that's the main thing. Well, I'm so glad that there is one on time, and that's God and his message always on time. Now, tomorrow afternoon, the Lord willing, I'll be speaking to you, preaching, the Lord willing. Now, if you'd like to read the text or write it down for this morning for a little simple drama, I would like for you to read St. Luke 7.36. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. Very simple, we are all acquainted with the story. Now, I believe that it must have been about sundown when the courier arrived. He was tired, his feet were dusty, his hair was muttered together with dust and perspiration because he had run most of the day. He had a duty to perform and he had to carry and do it. So he had probably went into Capernaum, and they told him in Capernaum, yes, he was here a few days ago, but he has gone. Then he went into Nazareth, and so forth, city after city. Finally, along about uh, late in the afternoon, the sun setting, tired, feet sore, weary, he finally had met the one that he was searching for, Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, 
if we could only be like that, run city to city, place to place, until finally we're in his presence. It must have been Philip. Philip was kind of a, the outside guard, seemingly. They met him first before they got into the other apostles. So like Jesus sitting somewhere, and there was John leaning on his bosom. Peter representing faith and love was closest to Jesus. So Philip probably brought this carrier to, let's say, Peter. Peter brought him on into the presence of Jesus. And he was tired. He be preaching all day, and perhaps his voice kind of husky, husk with soreness and uh, dust from the day of the people trampling on the ground and the dust coming up, his strength depleted as he must have stood and talked to the people about the word of God, was looking out upon them and seeing how that they were hungering and thirsting, would explain to them how God brought all about all of his great works. Oh, I would have loved to have been there to listen to that, no doubt. I believe that every person here would have longed to be there to hear what he had to say, listen to his doctrine, what his doctrine was, how he expressed himself, and what type of a voice he had, and look upon his face and to see him performing his works and designing the thoughts of the people and telling them of different things and diseases they had and pronouncing them healed. I would have loved to have been there. Oh my, I would like to have seen that and perhaps maybe he had just got through with uh, the sermon of you know jesus first doctrine did you ever know what it was ye must be born again that was his first doctrine ye must be born again so he might have went back to genesis and began and said in the beginning god said let there be and there was and he said let everything that i have spoken bring forth of his kind and it did then he might have brought something like this saying well now that it brings forth but yet he can take this seed and you can mix them together and you can get what's called a hybrid product beautiful very nice but it isn't the original you let it go it will go back to its kind again and a hybrid product can never stand the roughness and the treatment the original can stand. Why? An old longhorn would starve one of your herefords to death out on the prairie in the winter time. She can make her own way like a deer. But your hybrid hereford, your hybrid brangas, he'd die out there. We'd have to baby him. And he, if he was standing today, I believe he would say something like it to us. Not only have we hybrid fruit animals, but have hybrid religion. Has to be babied and petted. It's not the original. We try to take the word of God and breed it into something else and breed it all over here. And uh, it becomes a bunch of delicate babies that we have to uh, baby. And they can't take the real word. He might have been saying something like that. Then he might have said, you see, really your lives are hybrid. Father said, don't touch the tree. But Satan said it won't hurt you, so therefore your life is now a hybrid condition, and that life cannot go back to itself. Breed back. Like you can take the donkey and breed it to the horse, the mare, and it will produce a mule. But the mule, the mother and the father mule cannot have a baby mule. You have to keep hybrid. Same thing with corn. It's beautiful. But you read Reader's Digest, what all hybrids what all these hybrid things are doing to the people, cancer, everything else, hybrid chickens. They say that in 20 years, if it isn't stopped, what will happen? Women cannot have babies no more. They're becoming stronger, closer, smaller in the hips and can't have the baby. Leave things the way they are. Let God alone. That's a way with his word. Leave it like it is. Don't try to add to it to fix a creed, that it just the way God said it, believe it, that will make a husky strong Christian, not a baby that has to be a denominational baby petted around letter from church, one denomination to another, when he puts his name on the book in heaven, it's settled forever. Jesus might have said, now in order 
to get back to the original, God has to speak again. That's what he does when he gives you new birth. Your old life is gone, and you're back to the original word of the Lord. You're not. You're a hybrid into churches, denominations, but when God speaks, gives peace in the Holy Spirit, then you're back in the original family of God again. You don't have to be babied then. You're a rugged Christian who can stand it, go to the cross, to the fiery furnace, to the lion's den, or wherever it may be, because the word of the living God is burning in your heart and soul. That's right. And all can backslide and turn against you and everything else, but that won't stop one thing. That old rugged word of God stays right there. When he spoke that original voice into your heart, you are mine. I suppose maybe on something like that, I don't know, but he might have been speaking. And his voice was hoarse, his lips parched, his face red from the direct rays of the Palestinian sun, which is very hot. And then maybe Philip and Peter waiting till he finished. And then maybe he said this at the last, seek and you shall find. And about time he finished that, Peter might have said, Lord, here is a man that's been sent from a certain place by a certain man and wishes to speak with you. And he looked down at him and said, Say on, never too tired, but what he is ready to listen to anything you want to say. He is now the same today, no matter how late it is in the night, how weary he might be, he is still ready to answer anything, question that you'll ask him. And he said, This carrier perhaps thought this was uh, the time that his journey was over. So he said to him, A certain certain cardinal, bishop, something, Pharisee, my master is going to have a great feast and is honored you. My master is a great man and he's honored you, seeing the crowd that's around you. In other words, see the way you're dressed and yet he wants you to come and visit him at this feast at such and such a time. Jesus always goes where he's invited. No matter where it's at, he will come. Oh, he come to a lion's den one time, to a fiery furnace. I believe it was David said, I make my bed in hell. He will be there. He will come to the poorest, to the richest, to the most immoral, to the meanest, to the lowest. He will come anywhere he is invited. No matter what conditions and position in life is, he will still come. That makes him God to me, humble. I will be there. Go tell it, Master, I will be there at such and such a date. I will be there. The most miserable career. How could he have done it? I wish that I could have had his place, turned his back upon the Lord and went away with a satisfied feeling that he had pleased his master. So many times we are guilty of that. We are so interested. I was reading the Nicene Fathers, the post-Nicene Council, that where St. Augustine of Hippo setting with St. Martin one day, as he was visiting him at the monastery, out in the backyard, in the garden, God gave him the opportunity to receive the Holy Ghost, just like Martin did, but he turned it away. So interested in the dogmas of Rome till he couldn't receive the Holy Spirit. Many times we get that way. So interested in other things, sometimes we're so interested in time that we have brought right into the presence of the Lord Jesus walk away. A man interested me the other night on the platform when he was speaking about going to one of the conventions and taking his whiskey and cigars. That's all he knew about a convention. But I'm glad that he accepted the opportunity. So many times we don't do that, accept the opportunity. And this career delivering the message and in the presence of the Lord Jesus and yet was just stupid enough, if I must say it, to turn away and think that he had did all that was necessary. Sometimes we go to school, we get a PhD or a LD, LD, go into a Pentecostal meeting, and to tell them that the days of miracles is past because the bishop sent us to tell them so and turn away from the very fact that we're in the presence of Jesus Christ. What an opportunity God gave that man. That poor, miserable man, I wish that I could have stood there I would have fell down at his feet the first thing. If I said anything about what the cardinal wanted, I would say, Lord Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner. That would have been the first thing in my life, knowing that he was life. And the only 
resource to God was through him. I would have accepted him. Let him be my personal savior first and let the mission that the cardinal had given me or the pope or district man or whatever he was that had given me a mission, I would have sought Christ first. I think that ought to be the sole duty of every man, woman that attends these meetings, regardless of what somebody else said. You have been brought into the presence of Christ, no matter how successful or unsuccessful, no matter how great or how poor, no matter what you are, at the first opportunity, fall at his feet and say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Then come, tell the businessmen you'd like to join their ranks. Put God first. This most miserable man, how we would look at him this morning. If we could pull back the curtain and see if it was continually his attitude to turn from the presence of Christ, then he'd have the opportunity to stand by him. What a miserable person that is here today. Because he lives somewhere, and it might be you. And I, after this meeting today, it depends on your attitude. When we are in his presence, always accept it. But he turned his back upon the Lord and walked away, feeling relief, satisfied that he had done what he was told to do. Sometimes it's not good to do what we are told to do. In that case, it was right. So then we find out that he must have hurried back and brought the commission and I find him. I know who he is. Is I met him and I told him and um, I got his promise that he will be here. He will be here and he said he will be here. Now there's something wrong with this sin. There's something wrong somewhere. Those Pharisees didn't like Jesus. They hated him. They couldn't find his name on the denominational roll. They could find none of their schools of theology. He had come through, but he had come through one, not theirs, God's. So we find out that these Pharisees hated him. He had no cooperation with them. They despised him. And you cannot come together for fellowship unless you've got something in common. That's the reason we love to come to these meetings. We've got something in common. The Holy Spirit, brotherly love, fellowshipping one with another, where the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us all of our sins. We have the fellowship. We have something in common. When you see young people with old people, you see a little girl hanging around the grandma all the time. There's something wrong, too much difference in their age. You know, the young women, the 16 years old, they like to pop chewing gum and, uh, you know, and things like the others and talk about the boyfriends and the old ladies like to talk about stitching and cutting and sewing and cooking and so forth and the little kids like to play dolls or marbles tops or what more but when you see a little bit of girl hanging around with grandma you just imagine grandma has got a sack of candy somewhere something wrong or she's uh, is grandma's pet so this Pharisee must have had uh, what we call it the street, a trump card up his sleeve to invite Jesus because he hated him and no fellowship. I just imagine he said to the other great men in his neighborhood, you know that so-and-so prof so-called prophet, our people knows that it's telepathy. We know that he's a fortune teller and there's nothing to him. You know, all of them didn't die. A lot of them still live. We know that they we don't believe him our association has done denounced it so you know what at this certain feast that i'm going to have i'm going to see if i can get him down here and will prove that he is or not will prove that he is not what he says he is so we'll get him down here and that to my opinion was the card he held in his sleeve Oh, these Pharisees, there was only two classes of people then, rich and poor. So they they could really put on a feast. Oh my, they could uh, do it. They'd pick, select the most suitable time of the year, maybe when the grapes was all ripe around in the vineyards, and the night blooming jasmine and the orange blossoms that fill the air and just made the valley full of fragrance of the odor. And then they would take the... Al and roast a lamb, oh, a delicacy, roast that lamb. And uh, the poor people would smell it 
down in their town, their mouth with water, but to smell that lamb roasting. But you could only come by petition. They had their yards all fenced in and so forth, and they probably get out in the great patch in the back, and it was a really selected time for their so-called fellowship that these priests and hierarchies had together. And they just invited the celebrity. So you see, Jesus would be out of place there. Anybody filled with the spirit would be out of place there. So they they had all their discussions of their things. And that's one thing I like about the businessmen's meeting. Not only a businessmen's, but a where they sit and talk about how they can just get a little on this side and cut off a little from this one and rob Peter to pay Paul, they say. You know, and such things. I like it where you come and you talk about Jesus and about God and about the Holy Ghost and about the power and the resurrection and the Lord, the coming of the Lord. That's what I like in the businessman. But this fellow, he was a different sort of a character. He had, uh, and he had, he got everything ready. They selected. And no doubt sent word around to all the high priests and the bishops and so forth. Now he's coming down, be here. Now we'll just certainly one time for all prove that there is nothing to this guy and you all come down you've never seen him and we'll expect maybe something that we can catch him in so finally everything was put in order the right day come for the feast and um, that morning everything was set in order and everything ready and oh how they changed they could uh, get it ready everything just touched that morning, real early, all the servants was up with the tiles over their arms that was going to serve. The best had already been, the beast had already been killed, and there was all barbecued in the front yard, and the wines was all set in special bottles and jugs. The goblets was on the table everywhere, and all the servants were ready to serve. The crowds all that come. Transportation was a very odd thing. They had three ways of transportation. The army come in a chariot, the rich man come on a mule, the poor walked. So they had different ones out there to take care of the guests as they come up. It was really set up a nice place. Now let's keep our minds close. And as we see that perhaps maybe the man that was going to take of the soldiers' chariots that came, they had a place to take care of their own, to unhook their horses and uh, put them in the stable and give them food. And the uh, one for the rich to take their little donkey out and fix him. And uh, then they had another fellow there. He was called the footwash. He was a flunky. The lowest paid man of all the group was a flunky. Footwash. Lowest job of all. And sometime when we think that we are somebody and the highest hierarchy of heaven become flesh in a footwash flunking. When he come to wash mortal's feet, when he come to the earth, he didn't come to be a big somebody. God always takes the nobodies to make somebody out of them. That's the trouble with the people today. They are trying to be a somebody. You want to become a nobody. God takes something that's there, nothing to, to take something out of it, and it proves that he is God. How uh, that he got this low paid job to wash the uh, feet of the people, and Jesus taking that job, the lowest that there was on the earth, to become an example. He didn't have to do that. He could reach in a fish's mouth and pull out a coin or speak to the mountains, and it would pour gold by the billions of tons. He could pump water out of a well and turn it, it into the most delicious wine in the country. He could take five biscuits and two fish and fed 5,000. He didn't have to do it, but he was come for an example. The way Pentecostal people should be, right? L took the lowest job. Oh, sure. That's what, uh, but we try to take the biggest. If we can't be bishop, doctor, pres, or something high places, biggest things, oh my, we are just, we are full of big things. I don't come when I'm invited like this to baby and pet the people. I pray, say, God, that's your people. What can I say when I see the things creeping up? Then the Holy Spirit begins to tell me, strike at this. See, we want something big, and God takes it something little. Elijah 
heard the mighty rushing wind, the thunders, lightnings, and the earthquake, and never bothered him. But what attracted him was a still, small voice that made the prophet put something over his face and walk forth to hear God. I wonder if we Pentecostal people hasn't relied too much on rushing wind, uh, a lot of noise, instead of remembering or hearing that still, small voice. We hear so much rumble, we can't take time to hear the still, small voice. You know, a wagon goes out in a field, runs over humps and bumpity, 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 making all kinds of noise, squeaking and squawking and jumping, but coming back, it's loaded with good things. It passes this. Same bumps and don't make a move. We ought to be loaded. As long as there's malice around us, among us, long as there's difference among us, we are not yet loaded. Take a weed. Lightheaded. A wheat comes up, holds itself up in the air, and shakes by the wind, strikes, sticks its head straight up, but when it comes, it becomes full-headed, it bows. I think that's what's matter with all of us today. The churches, we don't associate ourselves enough in real humility, not our faults, but something that you stay there until something has happened to you. Humility. Too much wind and thunder, not enough. Still small voices, I think that is true. We look and see that it's true because the fruit that it bears upon our people, somehow it isn't just like it used to be. Back to our story. We'll get that Sunday. Notice, we find these Pharisees, this Pharisee making everybody, everything ready for his big blowout, as we'd call it, big spread that he's going to put on. And I look at the, the man out there to take the soldier's chariots, and the one taking the rich man's donkey. And in Palestine, they wear a garment on the outside, which is a robe. On the inside, they wear underneath garment that comes to the knees. And as they traveled in those days, they walked up over the mountains and across, making shortcuts. And when they did, they, the walkers, and the one who had beasts of burden, they walked the same path. And the beasts along the road where they walked up and then laying down, laying upon the ground, the dust began to accumulate. And where the beasts had crossed the land, there was a smell in the dust. And as the people walked, and this big garment swinging loose caused a wind, and it picked up the dust, and it got on their limbs, on their face. And they wasn't presentable to, to entertain if they were smelling like that. So they had a foot wash flunky that could meet the guests at the door. And when anyone come up with their card of invitation, he had a whole rack of what we would call something like bedroom shoes made out of textile or some kind of a goods. And the sandals of those days were some time a piece of wood, like we have um, called the Roman sandal, with a piece of leather that the toe went between and the foot was exposed then to the dust. And uh, as they tread along, they come to this place, give their owner their ticket, and they would reach down, take off the sandals and set them up in a place with their name and reach up on the mantle and get another pair of soft sandals and put on their feet, which they were ready then to go in on their rugs or sometime were real thick and great tapestries. They were had a beautiful play in their homes. Those people were rich. And the then the next thing these people this person did, he was washed his feet. Then the next thing happened, he went to the next guest and he was standing with a towel over his arm with a little cruise in his hand. Then he would pour oil in his hand and let him rub it behind his ears on his neck because his face was burning. He was dirty. And he take this towel and then wipe his face off good. And he was all right. The smell was off of him. And he was anointed with perfume. And that was costly, very costly. They get it. They tell me from the way up in the mountains where they get these little apples after the rose is gone. And the little apples, and it's a very costly thing, like the Queen of Sheba brought up to Solomon spices and specknard and so forth. And they made this perfume out of it. And they relaxed themselves by, they were feet was washed. The smell was off of them. 
that burning, blistering sun upon their face. And then they were refreshed. And then the next thing, the first step, second step, now the third step, now I could preach on that a while, but I haven't got the time. How that's justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then when they went in, they met the guests. Met the, they was met by the host. Then something like this, stand up the demos. After you see washed, perfumed, he did. He wasn't embarrassed of the smell. He had on soft shoes to walk on the big Persian rugs. He was anointed. He had a good smell on him, not the stink of the animals that was um, perfume. Then they reached like this, come right here by the demos. I've been to the Orient now. Take this hand like this. Then they'd come this way together. Then they parted one another when the host met the guest. Then that was called the welcoming. See, he'd been washed, perfumed, and was kissed. Welcome. They kissed on the neck. He was kissed. Welcome. Then he was a full-fledged brother. And that's the way it is in the church. When we are washed by the blood of the lamb, perfumed by the lily of the valley, and kissed by the father, then we are welcome guests. Oh, there is so much to be said there, but to keep you not too long. I don't want to tire you. But when, then kissed, welcome. He's at home. He didn't have to worry about nothing. He could go over and uh, at the refrigerator, get a big sandwich, kick off his shoes, lay down on the bed, anything he wanted to do. He was at home. And when God kisses us welcome into his kingdom, we are at home. It's all right. It's all over then. We been washed by the preparation that he prepared for us. His blood, a sweet-smelling savior, perfumed by the sanctification that drives the stink of the world off. Hallelujah. I feel kind of religious right now, taking away the stink of the world or the desires of the world. See, if the world is still in us, then there's something wrong. No wonder we can't have a real Pentecostal revival. No wonder there's something missing. The guest hasn't exactly entered right. You see, Jesus taught that one time about the robes. And he said, this man was found there not prepared. And he was bound and cast in outer darkness. So much could be said on it. But that's the way they did it. Then they were home. They felt like they were a brother. You can't feel... Like your brother, when you still desire the world, you can't associate yourself out here in things of the world of cheating, lying, stealing, you women bobbing off your hair and wearing shorts and everything, then still feel at home. When the word of God is being preached, you're supposed to be Pentecostal, supposed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Something hit at me a lot long ago, said, why don't you leave them people alone? Said, people think you're a prophet. I said, I'm no prophet. Said, well, they think you are. Why don't you teach them people, them Pentecostals, how to receive these things, how to get great spiritual blessings and enter into the presence of God and see visions? Also, if you'd leave them alone, I said, how can I teach them algebra when they don't even learn their ABCs? How can they accept spiritual things when they won't even have the common decency to clean themselves up? Not to hurt you, but to be honest with you, and honorable things that the Bible says that you shouldn't do. Yet, we associate with it. See? Sure. See? You can't be welcome. No, sir. You are out of place with the word. And he is the word. Now, so much for that. We'll get that some other time. But notice on as we go. You see, what's the matter with you? Well, you men that let them do it. That shows what you're made out of. Some of you women, pastors' wives, act like that and dress like that. What is it you're trying? Your husband will let you do it. Oh, brother, what is it? Some of these water head haircuts you have trying to act like the first lady of the land. Jezebel was the first lady of the land. Two, some of their pastors wouldn't tell them about it, but they had an Elijah down there. Stood out on it all right that was a pastor she didn't want to believe it let her around notice we find out that they had to be ready and prepared to go in how did it happen he's seen him now sitting in the room unwashed and anointed not kissed welcome sitting in a cardinal's house 
I want to ask you something. What happened to that foot wash flunky? Where was he at? How did he bypass that? What an opportunity and missed it. Oh, I believe if I had been there and knew he was coming, I would have been on a step ladder somewhere watching for him to come. The honor of washing his feet, the honor. But somehow he just bypassed him, let him go. Where was the man with the anointing oil? But somehow he was there and was dirty. It just, it kills me to say it, but Jesus is dirty feet. You know the Frenchman calls him Jesus, Jesus, with dirty feet, nobody caring to, enough about it to wash his feet. What's that got to do with us, Father Branham? He come and he was on time. He is always on time, never late. We call for revival and he comes. Somebody starts to praise the Lord or sweep. He's put out of the church, see? He is never welcome. Jesus with dirty feet. Oh, why? He'd get uh, dirty. He got dirty coming because he was called to come. And today, he is also, when he comes, he is called Holy Roller, some scandal name. Why did he take that sort of a thing? Because we invited him to come. And God came down in the form of human flesh. He lived here on earth. He became that so that we invited God to come. And then when he come, they don't want him. They didn't want him. Many times we don't want him. It interferes with our denominational setup. It interferes with the social standing we have with other churches. God have mercy on we poor miserable Pharisees. What we need is the power of the Holy Ghost back into the buildings and back into the people that they'd have the old-fashioned Pentecostal power that cleaned the church from the janitor to the pastor. That's right, amen. That's what we need, but we pray for it. And when it comes, oh no, that interferes with our social standing. See, oh sure, cuts down some of the dignity. If you don't have it just so and so, the people won't come. Jesus said, no man can come to me except my father draweth him. Notice again, all that the father give me will come. Keep the thing clean. We can't never compare with the world. We are doing wrong by trying to act like the world. We are never can compare with the world, with them. And we've got no business out on their grounds. Bring them over on our grounds. We got something that they haven't got. We got to act like them. Then they know we are saying something we haven't got. Let the world come to us. Not, not let us go out after the world. Let the world you know, Hollywood shines, but the gospel glows. There was a lot of difference between shining and glowing. Glow, not shine with the outward appearance. Glow on the inside by the Holy Ghost with sweetness, meekness, gentleness, patience, and love. Glow, don't shine. Shine after the world. The church is whole, not like it was in the days of Esther. Esther didn't take the perfuming of the women. She adorned herself with a modest apparel the hidden man of the heart, and the king said, put on the crown on her. Esther was a type of the church. Today, those who are ready to come out and adorn themselves with the sweetness of the Holy Spirit, not perfuming and all the dressing of the world, try to compare with them, but that hidden man of the heart, that's the one. Notice we find Jesus setting out there with dirty feet. They'd never been noticed. How did he get in? How did he miss? How did the foot wash flunky miss him? How did the rest of them miss him? I don't know, but he was sitting there with dirty feet. Nobody was doing anything about it. Oh, Pharisee, he and the other, the bishop and the archbishop and the cardinal and all the rest of them was over there tipping the goblets together and drinking the fine wines and talking about the things of the Israel but failed to see the God of Israel. That's today. We want the biggest buildings in town, and all the people like to flock to the biggest uh, building there is in the city. All these big, the best dressed, and all this other, and some poor little woman preaching the gospel down yonder on the street corner, or out there somewhere in an alley in a little church, and you don't want to associate with him. What's the matter? There's something wrong. 
go up there where the rest of the people act like this and dress the best it's too bad it's getting into our realms right what we need is a humbling what we need is a rebaptism of the holy spirit with god's love and power to take this world out of us bring us back to adorning again to the word washed by the water of the word get back to christ instead of fashioning ourselves of the world trying to act like the first lady and all these other things some of the bishops and so forth don't matter about that you want to be like jesus jesus now think of it everybody standing around the fence after the feast got on a fragrance of the lamb and the everything there wasn't nobody on the street everybody was standing looking in their mouths watering grasping for a bite of the lamb they couldn't come in no they were the poor the trash outside and here was one on the inside dressed and looked like them on the outside something wrong somewhere setting there not only the decency to wash his feet or kiss him welcome just let him sit there nobody around him his disciples couldn't come they wasn't invited but here he is sitting here looking around now listen way down the street to the lowest part of the city down in the red light district we turn right go up an alley and there's a little old creaking steps coming down the back as you climb it she squeaks and squeaks open the door and we find in there's a little woman oh i don't believe she meant to be bad maybe she had a good parent and she just took the road that's wrong or maybe she was a good girl some slicked head curly-headed judas ruined the little girl's reputation i'm always hitting at the women i'm going to take up for you a while there's a many good girl gone wrong because of some little perfumed judas running along with his hair slicked down and his mouth open in front going on with some little something on there one of these ricky or elvis machines out here on the street take some little girl out because she thinks he's cute give a cigarette get on the dance floor i've met thousands of them they are poor little lives wrecked and ruined ain't always their fault don't ever fall for a boy like that sister let him alone ain't nothing to to him if he ain't filled with the holy ghost i'm going to say something i don't mean it for a joke because this ain't no place for jokes but just something that happened in my church this was a place of the gospel we had a girl at our church here some time ago nice pretty little girl first thing you know she cut her hair that's against the rules yes sir when she does that the bible says she's a dishonorable woman get away from her the bible said a woman cuts her hair is dishonorable now that's the word god knows that's right and if the holy ghost is in you and you won't cooperate with that what kind of a holy ghost is that the holy spirit itself in you makes you live what you are if the holy spirit disagrees with the word and you call it the holy spirit then it's not the holy spirit of god you got some sort of a spirit today we have all kinds of spirits people say shut your eyes open up your mouth receive something you do but look what you got after you receive it don't you do that you come to god sensibly with all the intelligence holding on to the word get the spirit of god it will make you walk right in line with god sure this little girl she got running around with some little elvis after a while i asked her i said martha what makes you do that why do you see that guy he smokes i seen him stand right on the church ground smoking oh she says brother branham said you know said he's got curly pretty curly hair and said he just smells so good now if that ain't something to pick up a boyfriend i said he but he isn't saved i said i'd rather go with a boy that smelled like a stockyard and i'd fit in a box car and have the holy ghost yes i would than one of these little things she finally ended up on the wrong road like maybe this poor little, little girl did some boy led her wrong then she started and if you have already started sis there's hopes if you will just meet this man i'm talking about maybe 
she hadn't the had the opportunity. So she starts down the street on her regular routine, and she sees nobody. Where's everybody at? And uh, she passes another corner and another corner. Where's everybody? There's nobody today. After a while, she sniff, smells that aroma. Poor little empty stomach begin to hunger. She moves up against the crowd, up around the Pharisee's door, and she sees the bishop and the cardinals and all of them in there, tipping the goblet. And she presses herself up to the fence. And the people begin get away from her. Some of them worse than she is. That's right. Self-styled don't realize that every woman went wrong had some reason to. Every man that went wrong and we think we're so self-styled, many times we don't want to associate with the bums on the street. We ain't got time to stop and talk to them a minute. And then call yourselves Christians. Yes, she pressed her way up to the fence and she was looking around through their sniff. She was hungry and she looked and she was watching. Over here in the corner stood Pharisee. She could hear that great big ho 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 over in the corner. Look over and here he was tipping the goblets with that fine fancy wine and the lamb being roasted and the dinner almost ready to be served and looking around like that. And after a while her eyes caught somebody. Oh, may we call all catch that picture now, sitting over in a corner unnoticed, and she must have caught his eye. Nobody can ever look him in the eye, can ever feel the same again. She saw him and she thought, who is that? There's something different about him. And there is, there never was nobody like him. There can never be nobody like him. He was different from others. And there he was sitting. She looked down and people was turned away from him. And they, she, noticed his feet was unwashed. His face was still patched and burning. If you could only see that today and know, you know what I'm talking about, see? Him sitting in disgrace like his people does today to the world. They don't want no association with them. They are the same as you say Pentecost, brother. They are all they are gone. You say Holy Ghost, oh my, they are away from it. What we people need to do is to wash his feet, anoint him that we might rise in the power of his resurrection, take that disgrace off of him. Amen. Make the world ashamed of themselves with the power of his life in us as different creatures not like them out there that's cardon fodder that's nothing but atomic ashes the church is a born again creature here he was sitting in that kind of a crowd that's the way he looks and that's a way a genuine spirit filled man or woman looks in the sight of such a people a crowd notice she looked at him she thought you know who that is somebody here is that the prophet of galilee oh that's him oh her heart began to pound something when you find jesus your heart goes to acting funny it's going to get the masters right away heart went to pounding oh that's the one that was down there at the well where that one of psycho was that's the one that found the woman as immoral as I, and told her that she had too many husbands, and forgive her sins. Oh, he would never forgive me. I'm too wretched, but it's not right about him sitting there like that. He is the God of eternity. He is the only Savior. It's not right for him to be treated like that. And she got an idea. I hope you get one. Down the street she goes, just as hard as she can down to the little alley up the alley to the little creaking steps quickly quickly up she goes pull the little squeaking door open after she takes the lock off goes in falls down in the floor she thinks i'm on my knees she reaches under the bed pulls out a little box and unlocks it a little piece of her stocking perhaps she takes it out she shakes it there's all her living that's all she's got but she's ready to give it. I wonder if we are that sincere. 
don't point your finger on her if you're not. All she had, she was willing to give it. And she pulls it up to her bosom and she, her heart is full of joy. All of a sudden, something is presented to her. You know he's a prophet. I believe he's a, I, he's a prophet. I don't care what the rabbi says, what the cardinal or bishop says. I believe that he is a one that Moses spoke of. I believe that he is a prophet that was to visit us in this last day. In these days. And him being that, he will know where I got his money. He will know the means that I did to get his money. But it's all I got. Sure, he knows you. He can tell you right in this pulpit right now all about you. Yes, sir. I, you believe it? I can prove it to you. Amen. Excuse me. He knows what you're made out of. He knows these words sometimes scotch you. He knows all about you. But it's all she had. That's all he expects out of you. Just give your all to him. Your whole heart will and popularity, social standing, just throw it all on him, no matter what you have done. She said, this is my final, my only opportunity, and I'm going to take it. Maybe it might be your last opportunity. You better take it while you are in his convention. Don't you go home without it, for I believe you're going to see him moving in the same way he already is. You're going to see him greater things than, than this. You're going to see his word made manifest. Notice, and she says, it's all I got. And so it's all I can give. That's all he expects, Brother Branham. Um, I don't care what you are, how much hypocrite you've been, how good a church member, how self-righteous self you may stand this morning before the people. Just give what you got. That's all he expects. He will take that. She goes down the street. She said, well, easy. I'll go because there's something in me telling me to do it. That's when it's real, not when you're putting it on, but something real. Here she goes down the street and she looks around and she remembered Lavinsky has the best perfume shop in the city. So she enters the door. The little bell rings and one raised up, like to see who it was. Well, what do you want, like uh, some of these men, before they become Christian businessmen? That's poor business. What do you want? I don't like uh, for a person like that to be in my shop. I want you got the best you got. Oh my, the best I got. Yep. It's for a real certain person. It's for a special occasion. That's the way we want the best that we can be got the best we can give not just uh, three minutes a day in prayer but the best you can give oh i want the best you got well he knew a woman like that really didn't have money enough to buy that so she takes her little stocking top and uh, said how much is the best 20 pieces that's uh, the best you i got she pours a little stocking top out there and the money rattles oh of course, that's different. He said, uh, who said there's no profit in keeping Joseph in the land? He's ready to make it, you know. So he got up there and counts it. Oh, yes, exactly 20 pieces of Roman denarii. And that's what it costs. What are you going to do with this? Oh, this is a, for a special person. So he reached up on the shelf and gives her the alabaster box. She puts it in her bosom. She slips back up again. She looks in there. She sees a Pharisee and them all standing around in such a great conglomeration of a pomp. And she sees Jesus still sitting there with the dirty feet. Nobody has paid any attention to him. How am I going to get in? They'll throw me out when I start in the gate. But you know, there's something inside of her telling her to go in she wanted to do a service for jesus and if you are wanting to do a service for jesus there ain't enough bishops and cardinals on earth to stop you from getting in his presence that's right there ain't enough terminations 
and hypocrites in the country to do it, or enough devils in hell to stop you from it, if you're wanting to do a service for Jesus. Here she come. She slips around and sees a guard at the gate, turns his back. She sneaks under the gate. Here she makes a re way real quick. That's right. When you first get in, go right to him. Don't mess around. Don't go talking. See what this one says and what this organization says. And that says, go right straight to Jesus. Get to Jesus. Don't pay no attention to what these others say. Get to him right quick. So she slips up real quick. She stands, the Bible said, behind him. She got to thinking, oh, I'm in the presence of God. A strange feeling always comes over you when you come in that attitude. But if you come in that attitude that Pharisee had, you'll have the same feeling he had, nothing to it. But just come in that attitude that you want to see Jesus. See what kind of a feeling comes over you. Let that old heart melt within you this morning towards him. Listen to his still small voice. There'll be a different attitude. She sleeps up. He was sitting there. She thought, oh, I'm so nervous. I don't know what to do. If I get around, maybe he might run me out of here. Oh, what? Well, I'm nothing. Anyhow, now, when you get to thinking that you're nothing anyhow, if you're afraid you are going to ruin your prestige, then you better stay away in the first place. I'm nothing to begin with. So she ran around in front of him and she looked. Then she was close. That's what you want to get. Just a little closer to him to look at him. Maybe you've been looking at him too far away. You are looking at him way back yonder 2,000 years ago. What about him this morning? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same power, same signs. The works that I do shall you also. But the demos a while ago quoted it in King James, greater than this shall you do. But the right translation, and anyone knows, is more than this shall you do. No, not greater. No one could do any greater, but more of the same great works. He raised the dead and stopped nature. Nothing else could be any greater, but more. Why? He is in the his church universal, the great holy apostolic Pentecostal Catholic Church around the world. Jesus is in every member. He was the only in one man. God was then how? Now God is in his whole church. Right this hour, people is being healed. Right this minute people is receiving the Holy Ghost if he was just standing here alone in a man form as he was then he could be talking to this audience but now he talks the world over in the Holy Ghost so there she was in his presence she moved around I can see those little eyes look up at her, and her heart nearly failed. There's the man that forgave that woman and knowed her heart. He knew that woman of Samaria, Sycar. He knew she had five husbands, and uh, he knows how guilty I am. He does. He knows how guilty you are. He knows just how low down every one of us are. He knows. And she looked at him in the face, and she recognized it. Now she never looked at over at the Pharisee, or looked at the church, and see how many members belong to the church, whether she'd join it or not. She looked at Jesus. She felt guilty, and she couldn't hold her tears any longer. And she looked down at his feet, and the tears began to drop off on his feet. She was so ashamed, she fell down on her knees. She, he seen her, and she couldn't hold her tears any longer. There's something another about when you get around Jesus, you start crying, not with, uh, I ain't got no use for these cold, starchy confessions and putting your name on the book and joining the church, you got to die to yourself, be born anew, and the tears begin to drop off on Jesus' feet, and she didn't have nothing to wipe them with. So hanging her head down, crying her pretty curls that she had all done up on top of her head, you know, like this, fell down. She began to wash his feet with her hands and wipe with her hair. Some of our Pentecostal sisters bogging 
all their pretty hair off, have to stand on their head to get enough hair to wash his feet, to wipe them, right? But he, she, even in her condition, don't condemn her. She took her hair, began to wipe his feet, and she'd look up, oh, if he would have moved her foot, if she, if he would have butted an eye, should have whoop, gone out of there. But Jesus, when you're trying to do something for him, he just lets you do it. I love that. He just sat still and looked at her. And she's uh, tried to stay, eyes uh, and wiping his feet. I uh, want beautiful water to wash his feet. Tears of repentance. Better than he could have got from the old Pharisee or self made denominational waters. He had waters of repentance. Her great big briny tears striking his feet. Her with her pretty hair just washing and wiping his feet, saying, Hi, oh, I can't say this. She was eyes uh, wiping his feet. Then it got so real, she went, Kiss, kiss, oh, I can't say it. My Jesus just watched her. After a while, she took the alabaster box out. She was so ashamed to stand up to put it on his head. She thought, if I just can just sit at his feet, that will be good enough. Some of you want to be a big shot. His feet is good enough for me. His word is sufficient. As long as I know that I'm in him and his word is in me, that's good enough. When I get over there, if I can just put my hands on his feet, that's enough. That's all right. That's all I th ask, I think. That's the way we all feel, washing his feet, tears of water of repentance. That's what he wants. He's done washed off with penance, not penance, repentance. Washing his feet, wiping them with her hair. Directly she reached in nervously and she got the alabaster box and she hid it. She was so nervous and she broke the end of it, poured it all upon his feet. And she was real nervous. And uh, then she reached back and began to wipe his feet and kiss, kiss, kiss. I want, oh, and she looked up. I. She noticed his eyes was off of her then. What's going on all the time in the room? There's not a move made. What's the matter? Everything stops. Oh, I can see that self-styled Pharisee, the minister rascal in the country. Oh, he's uh, red in the face. He's so humiliated. Somebody said, Amen. Why? Somebody say, Amen in his church. Ah, you disturb him. Little power of God. He happens to say a word. He made a mistake somewhere. And said, Jesus Christ, come to save sinners. And somebody say, Glory to God. Oh, I'm ushers. Get them out. Yeah, they disturb me. They disturb me when they don't say it. So there, he was so humiliated, oh, plumbed down to all. Oh, he was just, uh, oh, mercy, I have to quit, see? He was so humiliated. He was looking at him. He said within himself, not into them cardinals, you see? I told you, if that man was a prophet, he would know what kind of a woman that was. Sure he did. She was a million times better off than him. Though he was a church member, she was a prostitute. Shame on you, miserable church. Poor church members that knows no more about God than that. Humiliated. Said, I told you. Told you, seeing. If he was a prophet, if he was a prophet, he would know that. He ain't no prophet. But Jesus could discern his thoughts. So he raised himself up. The little woman stood, her hair hanging down her over her shoulder, down about her waistline, the tear streaks down and um, grease all over her mouth from kissing his feet. Great big pretty brown eyes wonder what he's going to see. Looks down at her. He said, Simon, I got something to talk to you about. Oh, self-styled, poor, miserable hypocrite, professing to be a servant of Christ, I got something to say to you. You invited me to come here, and I come. I left my busy schedule, 
he always does that's right he come here he is here now sure i left my busy schedule because you invited me to come and when i got to the door you didn't wash my feet you didn't anoint my head and you never give me a kiss welcome but this woman ever since she's been here she's been nothing but wash my feet with tears and wipe them with her hair she anointed me now what's he going to do there she's standing there her big eyes looking up at him what's the verdict oh god let that be my verdict let that be what i hear when i try to do him a service though i have to say things to my people that cast me to pieces inside but i got to do him a service it's written in the word i must do it we must do it brethren regardless of what the price is we have got to do it it's a service that god requires preach the word right look at her she was spellbound what's he going to do con condemn me then he looked and he said and i say unto her her sins which were many are all forgiven her her sins which were many are all forgiven that's a verdict i want to hear i want to try through my life to do god's work you want to try the same and the verdict at the end will be the same thing thy sins which are many are all forgiven thee let's bow our heads just a moment we have invited him and he has come all through the churches this week with my brethren we prayed jesus be here i stood up on top of south mountain the other day said to my wife look down through that valley how many times in the last hour has God's name been taken in vain? How many adulterers was committed since last night in that valley? And she said to me, Billy, what did you come here for then? I said, honey, but down scattered through that big Maricopa Valley, that one day was nothing but cactus and lizards. There never been a, a prayer went up. In the last 24 hours, real born again saints of God, they are praying that the sinner will make his way to this convention. And he has come, he is here, I know he is. Let's make him welcome with our few tears of from our cold, cold, cold hard hearts. Let's wash his feet this morning. Let's tell him we love him, We're going to serve him from now on. Hear that a great eternal verdict, thy sins, which are many, all forgiven thee. I'm going to ask you a certain question i want it from your heart if there's men and women here which there is that's not lived right with god and you'd like to hear the verdict that woman had that day thy sins which were many are all forgiven thee will you rise up to your, your hand now don't nobody look let me and the lord look just raise up your hand god bless you god bless you god bless you all around now church members you here that knows that you never been born again and yet jesus is here you know you'd be ashamed if he would happen to make you shout his praise or try to tell you to testify to somebody you raise up your hand say jesus i'm sorry i want to be a real born again christian from today raise your hand god bless you god bless you now some of you pentecostal women with short bobbed hair shame on you now you know you're wrong if you didn't know it till now you know it now are you ashamed of it if you are raise up your hand no don't nobody look god bless you that takes a real lady to do that god bless you that's right god bless you that's right sure you are sure you're ashamed you mean to tell me that you got bobbed hair and not ashamed of it trying to please men in instead of god don't you realize that as long as you don't you'll never from this day on ever be able to go any further with god this is a thing that by purpose you right here see you got the holy ghost dance in the spirit speak in tongues you rely too much on that instead of a still small voice he you can have mental emotions but your life that proves what you are can you get grapes on a pumpkin vine cucumbers on a watermelon vine you know you're wrong raise up your hand be lead enough to do that many of you haven't raised your hand many of you god bless you there's a host of them now 
you men that permitted some of you preachers, shame on you, you full gospel preachers, let your wife do a thing like that, shame on you, God have mercy on your soul. Brother, with not the very decency enough to preach the gospel, are you afraid of her? What about some of you that smoke cigarettes, still claim to be Pentecostal, still take a sociable drink with the boss, some of you businessmen, still haven't to give up your tithings of things of the world too. You want to? You got to have a little sociable drink on Christmas? Shame on you, shame on you. Don't you know Jesus is going to condemn you on that day? You know you're wrong. Some of you has even bypassed the world in these last days. Churches are getting formal. Something is wrong. Your congregation won't stand for. I know some of you preachers are innocent. You go out here, preach the word just as hard as you can. That congregation, lay it on, brother, and God will hold them responsible. Some of you haven't loved him like you should. Some of you are real honorable Christians, and you haven't loved him like you ought to, and you know you're guilty. You don't pray enough. I'm going to put up my hand now. I don't pray enough. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of my life. I asked him to come to this meeting, and I'm ashamed of my life before him. I'm with you. I'm ashamed of my life before Jesus. Bless his heart. He came from heaven this morning to visit us, came to us, to talk to us, to speak with us. He's speaking to us right now, that little, still, small voice down in our heart. There might not be rushing mighty winds. We have heard so much of that. Let's veil our face this morning with shamefulness. I'm ashamed to be Pentecostal with the life that I live. I'm ashamed I have no more power in his presence. I'm ashamed that I'm no more of an example of a Christian before my people. Jesus, have mercy on me. God, I'm not without fault. I need correcting too. And your spirit is speaking to me. We want to talk to the, you, Lord. We want you to forgive us. We want you to be real Pentecostals, Lord. We want you to be really filled with the Spirit. We're not ashamed of tears. We're not ashamed of you in no manner. And this morning, you visit us. We want to wash your feet. We want to give you our lives. We want to be real Christians. We want the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, meek, gentle, loving one another, forgiving one another. God, for Christ's sake, forgive us. We want to be like him. He was our example. All that he has that desire in their heart, that you would like to bow your head this morning in his presence knowing that you're guilty too that you would just like to wash his feet too would you stand quietly to your feet now bless you my wife is to sing a song dear jesus i love thee i love thee father if ever i love thee dear jesus is now let's bow our heads now everybody our heavenly father our man begins crying out we have been so indifferent towards you. We mis have mistreated you. We mistreated the cause. We have been indifferent. I pray that for that poor woman just now, that the devil trying to get her away, go after her Holy Spirit, don't let her alone. Go after her, Jesus. That devil crying out, may he come out in the name of Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ, may that poor lost soul be saved. We are sorry, Lord. Move upon us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the goodness of God. Pour out of your blessings, Lord. We are washing our hearts with the water of the word. Come into our lives, Lord. Sit down at our table. Sit down and dine with us today, Lord. We'll take you just now as our savior will take you as our guide and our king and let the holy ghost just bathe our souls in his presence giving us love and mercy and understanding may every sinner take a new hold may the businessmen may this organization may every church member every person in here feel jesus take his place in their heart just now grant it lord we love you and we give you our lives welcome you to the convention we are going to baptize the people out here this afternoon, we are going to make altar calls. We are going to praise you in songs. We are going to praise you in the word. We are going to praise you with all that we got to let the people know that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation. We should go from here living different lives because of your visit with us. We will not try to be like Pharisee. We know 
that you are our king of prophets. You are the God prophet that speaks in our hearts now, and we pray that you will discern our hearts and reveal to us our causes that hindering the great move of God in this last day, that from here may go anointed ministers, anointed men and women with such an inspiration on them of the loving Lord Jesus until there be a revival breakout all the way across the continent. Grant it, Lord. We know you come on an invitation and we are going to make you as welcome as we know how in each of our lives we stand with this benediction in our heart, Lord, saying that we love you. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are above every organization. You are above the things of the world. You are above our dressing. You are above a, our everything. You are God. You are above our emotions. You are God. And we love you with all of our hearts. Receive us, Lord. O oh, Lord, as we raise our hands to you to give you praise, the great King of glory sets in our midst this morning. We praise thee and commit ourselves to thee through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bless his people. Do you love him? Do you reconsecrate your lives to him? Men and women, raise your hands and say, Jesus, I prayed to that you would come to this convention. Now I consecrate the, myself to thee from this hour on. Let me be holy thine. May thy walking talking and association prove that I'm sealed by the Holy Ghost, the way I live, talk, and walk. Give us a chord on the piano. I love him. Do you really mean it? Say amen if you do. Do you love this expression to Jesus as we sing it together, all together, in the old-fashioned way now? I love him. I love him because he first loved me all together. Now let's go. I love him. I love him because because me he first loved me. And a purchased my salvation on Calvary Street. There are so many, I can't even touch them. Calvary, the woman, just a moment in relaxing, just keep the prelude. Satan had interrupted. The little woman ran her from. The building the holy spirit caught her out there and brought her back she's in the meeting now relaxed in my name the shakas of devils power is in sweetness and humility that's what makes things great because it's humble and sweet don't you love him now all together again with our eyes closed and our hands raised towards heaven all your heart i love him i <laughs> 